everyone. Will Brink here, BrinkZone.com. Uh, should be a quick video today to cover a, an interesting study that just came out um, that may support or further support because there is uh, other evidence to support it, but the idea of putting creatine in coffee, of which I'm assuming you all know what I'm drinking, uh, wrong way, that way, you know, uh, I assume by now you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, Alpha Joe, but um, this is a really interesting study uh, that I say further, I'd say further supports the idea of putting creatine in coffee, but there are also some problems uh, so that we have to discuss. Uh, and I'll say, sort of give you the quick lowdown as to uh, what the study found and uh, the drawbacks of the, the realities of the study. So let me, uh, let's see, let's bring this guy in. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Uh, so it's, it's basically a brand new study out in the journal Nutrients. Um, let's see, uh, where is the title? Of course, I don't see the title. Mm -hmm. Abstract. Uh, that's because I'm an idiot and I have to... Ah, there we are. Okay, that's why we couldn't see the title, because I had not scrolled up high enough to find the title. Anyway, some days I'm just... I am just not the sharpest slice of bologna in the shed some days. So, the effect of creatine nitrate and caffeine individually or combined on exercise performance and cognitive function. A randomized crossover double-blind placebo-controlled trial. So... If any, of you know, if any of you know even a little bit about research, obviously, randomized double-blind placebo is uh, the highest sort of gold standard um, setup. This one is a crossover trial, which uh, can be, uh, is, a, is an excellent way to go about it, just uh, takes longer, but you can do, you have a, an additional certainty that the differences between groups uh, is not there because it's the same group. It's the same group of people that will take something they will wait a time, which is a washout period. They will take something else and test them again and so forth. Obviously, like every study design has its pros and its cons as far as, you know, how long the washout period was and all that. But as long as they're done properly, washout studies are actually quite good. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to give you the sort of the lowdown as to, as to what was found. I will link this paper below. Um, I will also link some other articles below to my site that further sort of... Um, support the idea of why Alpha Joe exists and why the formula that I uh, gave away for so long existed, which is three very simple ingredients that go into, or go into coffee as a coffee booster, i.e. creatine, cocoa, and tyrosine. So what is, so what this, basically what this study found was, uh, let me go to it quickly, the abstract. Now, I don't, again, for those who read studies, don't read studies. Anyway, the abstract is, is as it appears, it's just sort of a summation, it's a summary uh, of what they found and all that. Now, I'll give you a quickie feedback on that, is the problem with abstracts, and there's nothing inherently wrong with abstracts if, like anything, you use them properly, but most people, including people with higher education, science, medical background, don't read past the abstract, and they know that. Uh, so, you know, the abstract, again, it's, it's perfectly good for, for its intended purpose, but if you want to know what's going on with a study, uh, you'd actually have to read the study. And there's many times where you may be, like, talking to somebody or debating or something, and they'll put up a study that says, see, you know, this study says, and you know the person didn't read past the abstract. Because, unfortunately, there are t times when the abstract does not actually reflect the paper. And I know that sounds weird, but uh, it's not as uncommon as you might think. That is not the case in this paper, per se. I'm just saying, FYI, just because I'm reading you a quick abstract, what I'm going to do is just um, do that quick, and then we'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, scroll down to the bottom at the uh, conversation and the discussion-type conclusions real quick, and then if you want to read the details in between. So study, this study examined the effects of creatine nitrate and caffeine alone and combined on exercise performance, cognitive function, in resistance-trained athletes. And what they basically found was there was a, a statistically significant benefit in the combination of caffeine and uh, creatine nitrate on cognitive benefits, and you can read what those are, but they didn't find any benefits on performance. 
and that was using five grams a day of creatine nitrate, uh, which you can see my little say creatine nitrate, and caffeine at 400 milligrams a day. So there's a number of odd things about this. For one thing, 400 milligrams of caffeine, for me, it's a lot of caffeine. Um, 400 milligrams of caffeine in one sitting would make my head explode. So that's a lot of caffeine. Um, five grams a day of creatine nitrate um, should have been adequate. But again, you know, remember, there's creatine and nitrate in creatine nitrate. And the percentage of nitrate in that particular molecule is higher. Uh, I forget what percent the nitrate makes up of that molecule, but um, creatine monohydrate is the highest amount of actual creatine per per gram or per milligram. Anyway, so that, so here's a couple of odd ball things about this one. So they found synergic, synergism combining them in cognitive benefit, but they didn't find any benefits in performance. Uh, and that is weird because for one thing, caffeine alone, especially at those doses, usually not always but usually find some sort of benefit on on performance uh creatine alone usually but not always but let's say the majority of studies usually does find some benefit on performance um some people may bring up something like well you know didn't they find that caffeine and creatine uh nullified each other or that the, the caffeine nullified the creatine you know that 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 was a long time ago, and studies after that don't seem to find that to be the case. Uh, but again, um, it's not as as clear. In fact, there was even one study, which that reminds me, it's on my it's on my uh, website that actually f suggested that the cre uh, caffeine actually helped with the creatine. So how about that? So the findings of the study are a little odd. Uh, I am surprised that they did not find any performance benefits. I'm not real surprised that they did find, as I would have expected, because of, of other data that exists um, and subjective experience uh, from people that, you know, have used, uh, have done that combination. Um, I'm not surprised that they found a synergistic effect of combining the creatine and the uh, caffeine together. So the effects there are a little odd, but take that as it is. Um, a couple other issues we have to, we have to look at before we say, ha ha, you know, putting creatine in coffee works, you know, uh, Will's, Will's, Will's smart. Uh, I'm glad he, I'm glad he uh, told us to do it. Anyway, one, caffeine and coffee are not interchangeable. I'm going to put that article underneath too. Uh, and, and unfortunately, again, lots and lots of smart people over the decades uh, continue to uh, claim, say, you know, in, insinuate that cre uh, caffeine and coffee are interchangeable and they're not interchangeable. Um, and I, you know, I make that case um, in, in one of my articles and, you know, give some pretty good, I think some pretty good evidence. Uh, remember, you know, you have, you have caffeine, synthetic caffeine, caffeine and hydride is the standard caffeine that you'll find used in studies and in caffeine products and no dose and all that. It's dirt cheap and it's a single molecule. Coffee consists of, um, oh, I think about something like a thousand, a thousand different bioactive compounds, somewhere in that ballpark, many of which have not even been studied. But there's a bunch of them have been studied. Some of them are uh, directly counter to coffee. Uh, they feel different just subjectively and objectively. Uh, there are some, like I say, there are, there are compounds in coffee that actually lower blood pressure and heart rate. And of course, there's caffeine that can raise it. And there's, as, as with a lot of complex biologicals, there are what we would call counter-regulatory compounds in them. Whereas when you pull out that one, which Western science loves to do, find that one active, pull it out as caffeine or whatever. So they're not interchangeable. So making the claim that, from the study, should I say, making the claim right off the top that's saying, well, this proves that, you know, creatine in coffee is going to improve cognitive benefit and being, you know, be a nootropic and all that. I, you know, that has to be, that has to be studied uh, on its own, i.e. putting some creatine in the coffee. Uh, you're making something of a, of a leap of faith here, you know, by claiming this study proves it. Um, and two, um, Creatine nitrate. I don't know why these guys use creatine nitrate. Um, I looked at the, sometimes you know why they use something because you can go look at um, the funding 
Um, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't show that it or claim that it's funded by anybody, any company or what have you uh, that produces creatine nitrate. Uh, I'm assuming most of you know, if not, you should know that, you know, 90, I don't know, 98% of all the research out there showing benefits of creatine is done with monohydrate. All the rest of put the, all the pile of the other ones, um, none of which have been shown to be superior to creatine monohydrate. And that's a different video. But I don't know why they chose creatine nitrate. You know, it would have been, again, really interesting if there had been a creatine monohydrate group um, with this. That would have been really quite useful uh, and telling to see if there was any differences. Now, you know, did they hypothesize that there might have been some, some benefit uh, to performance and cognition via the, the nitrate um, part of it? Yeah, I, I guess it's possible, but it just... Normally, you know, when you're, when you want to demonstrate something like this, you would either, you demonstrate because the company, you know, funded it and they want you to demonstrate it, or, you know, you are going to use what, what all the other studies have used to demonstrate an effect, which would be creatine monohydrate. So those are two things I, I'm not, I, I don't quite uh, understand. So introduction, this is a pretty long paper and, you know, it's, it's, it's a good study. It's well controlled. I didn't, nothing jumped out at me as you know, terribly uh, problematic. Um, let's see. Let's let's go down. Da, 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 da. Discussion. You can read. That's good. Um, conclusion. This study's offer. This study offers evidence of cognitive benefits of co-ingestion of caffeine and creatine nitrate in resistance trained athletes. While the supplements were shown to boost cognitive function, they did not yield significant improvements in exercise performance. This study also contributes to the sports nutrition field by confirming the short-term safety of these supplements. I, I should actually mention that. Uh, they did actually also do some uh, extensive blood work and so forth. And as expected, they didn't find anything, any negative. So again, um, if anybody to this in 2024 is still claiming, making ridiculous claims about, you know, health problems or negatives of creatine, I, I just don't know what to tell you. 1990 called it wants its myth back. Really, get on, you know, get with the program, people. Anyway, um, so they also did a fair amount of blood work, and it all came out fine. Uh, so future research is warranted to comprehensively explore these supplements over a longer duration uh, and across a more diverse demographic to ascertain their role in cognitive and exercise performance. So again, if you want all the details, read the paper. I'm not, I don't see a waste of time to, you know, sit there and pop out all the details. You got the basics, the importance of it. So this study... Um, along with the other ingredients uh, in Alpha Joe, i.e. cocoa, and there is a specifically cocoa and coffee combination study that found a benefit of those two, uh, does support the idea of putting creatine in coffee, but there are two, at least two major caveats, which hopefully I have explained it. And uh, if you've got any questions, comments, you know, leave those below. And uh, obviously sub up to this, and I'll see you all on the Brink Zone.